Uh, so we're going to talk today about uh, actually autologous mesenchymal stem cells uh, for musculoskeletal tissue regeneration. So I, I, my background is actually interventional pain management. So we see a lot of patients in chronic pain, a lot of patients with chronic joint pain. Uh, the recent history of medicine, as you know, is everything seems to go from uh, more invasive to less invasive. So uh, we've seen this many, many, many times. And I think the same thing is going to happen in how we treat orthopedic conditions as well. In cardiology, we've seen uh, things go from cabbage. When I was in medical school, it seemed like every single patient 50-some years or older had a cabbage scar. Uh, that we did HMPs on, and then it went to obviously angioplasties and then to stents. In orthopedics, we've obviously seen it go from open joint surgery to arthroscopy, and actually my belief is sometime over the next decade, we're going to see arthroscopy abandoned, and we're going to go to the next step beyond arthroscopy, and that's actually what I'd like to talk about today is, is where does it go from here in orthopedics? or regenerative orthopedics. Well, the future is really biologic. The focus will shift from management to repair. And in the not too distant future, we've all heard about these types of things. You read futurist magazines and you've probably heard about nanomachines the size of white blood cells that eventually one day are gonna course our bloodstream sort of fixing damage. And that's quite a ways away. But what if such machines were already here? You've already heard Dr. Zanos uh, this afternoon talk about uh, the use of CD34 positive stem cells. Now we're going to talk about a completely different stem cell line. Uh, basically what I would term to be the, uh, the kind of the all-around player, if you will. So white blood cells, 10 to 14 nanometers, uh, adult mesenchymal stem cells about the same size as a white blood cell. So let's first sort of back up a little bit and talk about stem cells because this is not something that we've ever really gotten training in. So let's sort of go over some of these things. First, we're going to be talking about adult non-embryonic stem cells. I think that's an important distinction. And there are lots of different types of adult stem cells. There are endothelial progenitor cells. There are hematopoietic stem cells. It's the hematopoietic stem cells that you've probably heard the most about to date. Those are the CD34 positive cells that Dr. Grecos uses and was talking about. Those are probably the most common ones that have been talked about. Actually, there's a lot more research, however, by a factor of about 10 in this stem cell line, mesenchymal stem cells, and that's the one we'll talk about today. There's a very small embryonic-like stem cell, which is a new up-and-coming stem cell. That stem cell is fairly uh, uh, not well studied, but it's getting there. There are neural stem cells and other stem cells. You'll hold, you heard today about some of the endothelial progenitors up here. So we're going to focus on that stem cell line. To date, MSCs, or mesenchymal stem cells, have been found in heart muscle, bone, cartilage, tendons, ligaments, nerves, hearing cells, you name it. Uh, they've been shown to repair all of these different things in clinical studies, uh, which are very, very small at this point, and most of this data is actually animal. But a pretty, pretty much an uh, all-around player, if you will. If you actually look at the number of uh, papers indexed in this area, it's pretty amazing. So I'll put up here versus a standard surgical procedure just to give you an idea of uh, how much is being published on an annual basis versus a control. So you can see here not much is published every year in the National Library of Medicine. And then around the time of the Bush stem cell ban, just incredible amounts of publication, several thousand a year. We're up right now to about 3,500 papers per year being published on the mesenchymal stem cell line uh, this year alone. It's about 7,500 index papers, about 3,500 year per year. We'll probably see that go up to about 5,000 a year next year if this rate continues. So an awful lot of publishing activities out there. Mesenchymal stem cells are an all-around player because they don't just differentiate. We all sort of know that stem cells are important because they can differentiate into another cell, and that's good. 
But mesenchymal stem cells are also construction managers. They're Bob the Builder cells if you have kids. Uh, so these are cells that actually not only differentiate into another cell, so they're not only the, the mortar and the bricks, but they're also the mason as well. They also help other cells to come in and, and uh, coordinate a repair response. Just like the CD34 positives you were hearing about before, they can bring in new blood supply, but they can also control inflammation and again, coordinate the entire repair process. And they live mostly in bone marrow. I mean, they're all over the place, but if you want a place to get a lot of them, uh, for high yields, bone marrow is probably where you want to go. They do live in fatty tissues, and there are a lot of them in adipose tissue, but for my use in orthopedic repair, those cells are, are not nearly as effective, by a factor of about five, as bone marrow cells. But these fatty mesenchymal stem cells may be useful in cosmetics. They may be useful in neural repair, in immune uh, system uh, modulation, but not so much in orthopedics. Uh, there are very few in blood. They probably do not circulate in any significant amount in the blood. And it may not even be possible to mobilize them, given our current chemicals and growth factors, from the marrow into the blood. So if you're trying to collect them in the blood, at least so far, that does not appear to be possible. Joint tissues, uh, there are some in there. We can isolate them, and we do from synovial fluid. You can also get them from synovial tissue. But again, uh, not as many as you can get from the bone marrow. They do live in muscles and around blood vessels as well. So how rare are these cells, even in the bone marrow, where they're supposedly the most uh, plentiful? They're very rare. Just to give you an example, between 1 in 10,000 and 1 in 500,000 of the marrow nucleated cells is a mesenchymal stem cell. So really rare cells. There's just not that many of them in there. This is one of the reasons why bone marrow concentrates don't work that well.